Given what a certain rich man is doing with his own personal space project, you might think that there is only one goal in terms of space right now. Get a colony on Mars. SpaceX and others are trying to work hard on a way to get to Mars and set up a base there that eventually begin the long march towards having a full-on civilization on the Red Planet. And while that is indeed what a lot of people want, there are some who have their sights closer to home and want to get to the moon. Allow us to show you the NASA Artemis 1 moon mission. First flight of new mega rocket won't launch until May. Delayed launch. NASA's Artemis 1 moon mission may end up being a summertime affair. An April launch is no longer possible for the Artemis 1, which will send an uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon using a huge space launch system, SLS Mega Rocket, agency officials said on February 24th. And May could be difficult to hit as well. We continue to evaluate the May window, but we're also recognizing that there's a lot of work in front of us. Tom Whitmire, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development at NASA headquarters in Washington, said during a virtual news conference. Some of that work will involve analyzing data from the Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal, a crucial test that will take the SLS Orion stack through many of the milestones it will hit on launch day. Liftoff excluded, of course. Like the launch, the wet dress rehearsal will take place on pad 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, KSC, in Florida. SLS and Orion are scheduled to roll out to the pad from KSC's Cavernous Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2300 General Mountain Time, on March 17th, agency officials announced. It'll likely take about 12 hours for the huge vehicle to make the relatively short trek to the pad. The SLS Orion stack will probably spend about a month on pad 39B with roughly two weeks on either side of the wet dress rehearsal, agency officials said. The vehicle will then roll back to the VAB for further analysis and processing. The May launch window runs from the 7th through the 21st, Whitmire said. If Artemis 1 isn't ready to go by then, the next opportunity comes from June 6th through June 16th. And the next window after that runs from June 29th through July 12th. Obviously, the more delays that happen, the worse the mission might be in some ways. But all is not lost. Windows. If you're curious about the timetables, these windows are limited for a variety of reasons. Whitmire said, he cited, among other factors, performance constraints on the SLS, the need to line the launch up properly with Earth's rotation and the position of the moon, and the fact that the solar-powered Orion isn't designed to fly through eclipses that last longer than 90 minutes. Artemis 1 is a huge mission for NASA and its Artemis program of crewed lunar exploration, so the agency is taking its time to make sure everything is in order before it lifts off. Artemis 1 will make the first ever flight off of the huge and powerful SLS and the second mission for Orion, which flew to the Earth's orbit atop a United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket in December 2014. If all goes well during the roughly 26 days of Artemis 1, NASA will start gearing up for Artemis 2, which will send astronauts on a journey around the moon. That landmark flight, NASA's first crewed mission beyond Earth's orbit since the Apollo era, is tentatively scheduled for 2024. Artemis 3 will put astronauts on the moon in 2025 or thereabouts using a SpaceX Starship vehicle if all goes according to plan. And that lunar touchdown isn't the Artemis endpoint. The program aims to establish a long-term sustainable human presence on and around the moon. The lessons and skills gained from doing so will aid NASA's next giant leap, putting astronauts on Mars, which the agency aims to do in the 2030s. To be clear, SpaceX wants to do the Mars mission in this decade. But we're not talking about them now, are we? Exactly. Let's move on. The Artemis program. So now that we've talked about what the game plan is for the Artemis 1, we need to talk about this program as a whole. Because NASA has not only lofty goals, but a set of achievements that they want to do during and after the mission's hopeful success. With Artemis missions, NASA will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon using innovative technologies to explore more of the lunar surface than ever before. We will collaborate with commercial and international partners and establish the first long-term presence on the moon. Then we will use what we learn on and around the moon to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. But again, SpaceX is trying to get to Mars, well, now. They really want to get to the red planet soon. 
So that might leave you to wonder why NASA is dead set on the moon. We're going back to the moon for scientific discovery, economic benefits, and inspiration for a new generation of explorers, the Artemis generation. While maintaining American leadership and exploration, we will build a global alliance and explore deep space for the benefit of all. They make it sound so simple, don't they? But another thing they neglect to mention is that they aren't the only ones trying to get to the moon. Blue Origin. Yep, Jeff Bezos is also in the space race, and he's using his own mega billions in order to get things done, in his own way, of course. Obviously, when it comes to exploring space, the plan is to go and create colonies. And Bezos is not only beyond this, he feels we need to get this done yesterday. Our choice. One of Bezos' plans he laid stated, stasis and rationing or dynamism and growth. Clearly, he is a guy who feels we should go and be dynamic and grow the earth. He even laid out his plan in part by noting that we need self-sustaining colonies in key places in the universe to act as a sort of relief to the population on earth. After all, if they're not here taking the resources of others, that gives more for everyone else. Basic supply and demand. But unlike many, he's not looking to Mars, unlike NASA and SpaceX, among others. He feels that humanity has a lot to get from the moon itself. Not to mention, he feels it'd be better and cheaper to try and launch a colony mission there versus one to Mars. And technically, he's right. The problem for a moon colony mission has always been whether we could work with the limited survival resources there. But for Bezos and others, they're looking at the more financial reasoning to go there. Because what the moon lacks in atmosphere and water, it makes up for in cobalt, gold, helium, iron, palladium, platinum, tungsten, and other resources. More than enough to fund multiple colonies, wouldn't you say? Because in the end, it's all about the money. Let's just hope that Bezos isn't in charge of the workforce up in space. We choose to go to the moon. Look, regardless of what happens or doesn't happen with the Artemis 1 launch, the goal is still going to be the same. Get to the moon and colonize it. And regardless of whether it happens in this decade or next, the dream is what is keeping this going. Because regardless of who you support and which place you think we need to colonize first or next, the fact remains that we want to be a species that has homes on multiple space bodies. It's that vision that has led to many great sci-fi books, TV shows, and movies. We want to be that race that has spaceships that take us across the galaxy and allows us to see other worlds without much issue. And if we do get a moon base, that would be a huge thing. And it would open up many avenues for the space colonizing of the future. Sure, we don't know all the steps, missteps, and other things that will happen before that colony is built on the moon. But given all the people that are working on such things, you can at the very least believe it's going to happen. And when it does, a lot of people are going to follow in the footsteps of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they'll be taking a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the Artemis 1 mission and how things might go for it should the launch go as planned? Do you think that a moon launch and mission is more likely to succeed? Or do you feel that we're better off focusing on Mars and all that it has to offer? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.